Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for September 11th, 2021, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Crucial for all of us is understanding the hidden power of relaxation. People take vacations, they go places, do things, or, you know, try to rest, so to speak. Along our journey through this life, uh, you know, many probably have experienced personal success, accomplishment from intense amounts of efforting. Most of us contain this, it's a deeply conditioned belief system inside that says, in order to reach my goals in this life. It will require a lot of hard work and persistence. And this belief that we achieve our desires only through intense effort is an oldie and a goodie, which contains a solid work ethic. Yet, when it comes to mastering our lives, you may find that working hard is completely overrated and is mostly filled with dogmatic beliefs derived from some archaic, limited-minded consciousness. Everything that we experience, generation after generation, things that are invented through someone else's mind, and then it sticks. So we follow those courses, and we don't know why. It's just that's the way it is. The illusion many of us, the, the illusion that many of us are still living under is that we are not all powerful, infinite beings who can manifest anything we want. Now, you imagine that you have a civilization that believes that, that we are not all powerful, infinite beings who can manifest anything we want. Guess what's going to happen? We won't. We've forgotten we are spiritual beings who are tapped into a web of energy, thought, and power. And we've been blinded by the material world thinking it is real. And we've forgotten to look behind the curtain as Toto finally did in the movie The Wizard of Oz. This means it is our basic animal nature and instincts that will reveal what's really going on. The truth is, is that we already have the ability to create whatever version of reality that we desire by merely pulling back our shades and seeing what beliefs we are holding as true or real in our imaginations. The real power and science of manifesting is one that most people really do not understand at first, as it breaks all boundaries of what is real and what is not real. Manifesting is meant to take us beyond our normal accepted paradigm of understanding. And once we get a taste of how real and easy it actually is, we can never go back. The ordinary day becomes extraordinary because we know the golden trick to life. This is the golden trick to life. Most people would think that you're silly to think you can manifest something with less effort instead of more. Yet, these beings don't understand one fundamental principle, that all the real work in this life is not done in the outer world. It's all about elevating our inner world. And this experience of inner elevation is like taking a high-speed elevator to the penthouse floor. Now, I wouldn't call this ride work at all, as it is much better described as an enjoyable letting go process that is filled with deep joy, gratitude, trust, and a true release. We can effortlessly leap over our blocks instead of pound through them to reach our goals and dreams. We can effortlessly leap over our blocks instead of pound through them to reach our goals and dreams. We simply ask for what we want, wait, as the benevolent universe makes its way to deliver our desired outcome to us. 
And the world of manifesting, it's always essential to focus on feeling the end result first. Feeling the end result first. If you want a new relationship, what will it feel like when you're in one? This is your way of communicating to all creation, that you are fully aligned with your highest soul's mission on this planet at this time. The quieter you become, the more you are able to hear. Zen saying. The, quiet you be, the, more, the quieter you become, the more you are able to hear. One highly effective technique to start on the path of relaxation is to practice meditation. Simply experiment with sitting quietly and doing nothing but following your breath, not your mind. If you have an overly active mind and need assistance, you can say out loud, I am as you're breathing. Try saying I on the inhalation and am on your exhalation. Doing this practice for 10 minutes will cultivate a relaxed body and peaceful mind within as long as you have no expectation on what should or shouldn't happen. When you start meditating daily, you'll soon discover how noisy and chaotic our inner world can be and what it really takes to tame the mind and get super silent inside. As you discover that you can approach your mind from this more relaxed, expansive space, trusting that each moment and experience is the right one, you'll find a deep cosmic-like peaceful feeling at the core of your body and mind. It's from living daily from this space that you find the power to start attracting some truly miraculous manifestations. When you stop all efforting to get somewhere and let life carry you, you can actually love your life as it is right now and taste this simple, sweet experience of bliss that lives inside you. From a not efforting approach, we are still doing what we enjoy doing, helping others and making this world a better place. We are simply doing it from a relaxed body and mind. It's a, it's a thousand times easier for the divine power to enter our consciousness and start flowing through our actions more fully. It is like trying to create a foundation for a new house and receiving help from a bulldozer when you've been picking at it this entire time with a white plastic spoon. When you hand your life over to spirit, the sacred spirit takes over you and you discover heaven exists on this earth as the human being in you meets the divine. You could never imagine how easy it is to manifest anything you want until you put 100% of your faith in letting go and relaxing about the outcome you want to occur. The moment you stop trying so hard, as many of us do, and really let go of how everything should happen, the universe feels this divine trust and then decides to fill you with its reward. And yes, the universe is truly benevolent and a very attentive listener indeed. You may look back at your life and think that this thought is completely erroneous and that the world is a horrible place. Yet before you go there, please hear my words. You are love itself. There is nothing different than you and the source of love. There is nothing different than you and the source of love. This is perhaps the greatest key, at least that I have found, others have found, to reaching your highest vibration in this life. It is so simple and ridiculously profound that you might just overlook it. And when you realize its truth, you start relaxing so deeply inside yourself that you simply let go of the lowest vibrational thought forms and feelings. Who would have guessed that you just need to relax into the source of love itself in order to elevate your consciousness and truly master this world? This world is filled with paradoxes. The main one being, 
that you think you are powerless and unloved, while in truth you are deeply powerful and the source of love. Love is not something that comes from somebody else. This is a mere reflection of the real light that is always found within. Once you have conquered greed, nothing can limit your freedom. Once you have conquered greed, nothing can limit your freedom, Buddha. Once you become totally relaxed, you find that your body and mind is proof that you are an all-intelligent, powerful, loving, conscious presence that is deeply connected to source. Being relaxed is empirical evidence that you, all of us, are one with this universe. Now, this doesn't mean you're checking out in a lazy coma through drugs, cigarettes, TV, or alcohol. Your mind would be too busy processing the chemicals to take a real vacation. When it can reach your natural state of bliss within, a relaxed body and mind is like stepping into the house of blissful abundance. Your chakras, your energy channels, transform into a receiving mode, allowing your highest possible self to show up with effortless joy and ease. I refer to relaxation as a hidden power because it's not very obvious how powerful we are when we are truly relaxed. We may feel peaceful, yet not always powerful. And when we are super active in this life, moving rapidly, taking, you know, talking quickly, getting tons accomplished in our day, it's easier to think that we are an empowered being. Yet, if we could do the same outer work, yet from consciously relaxed space, we'd feel aligned with the universal God source, and that would know what real empowerment actually is. Anytime we are attempting to be overly successful, achieve too much in life, and propel ourselves forward faster to reach our highest goals quicker, we are missing the real goal of life to enjoy each moment of the journey and appreciate it all. To enjoy each moment of the journey and appreciate it all. How much can we enjoy the beauty of the Grand Canyon if we're driving 120 miles per hour alongside it? Not very much. Relaxation is absolutely vital to our success as human beings and as a conscious, enlightened, and manifester. If you think this approach is about not getting anything done and becoming more lazy, think again. This relaxation that takes you to the source of conscious intent as you truly let go of attachment to outcome, what could be lazy in that? It takes you consciously diving deeper inside your God self, trusting your connection to its wisdom, where you feel grace is supporting your every breath. It is only here you can remain centered in the highest vibrations of love, peace, and oneness without even trying. This is the only way we can experience what it means to truly be alive. Misery and despair is what is left after you have gone through all the trouble of trying to satisfy the ego with money, knowledge, things and power only to find that the lower self can never be satisfied. Babaji. If you want more enlightening understanding, continue with meditation. It is the only way to discover the God within and any other way. Many have tried different ways, but never really has worked. So they find themselves going full circle back into meditation. Ego mind's constantly trying to tell you, I don't need to meditate. What are you doing? You're wasting time. What are you just sitting here doing nothing for? You've got to get up and start doing things. You've got a lot to do. Quit, quit paying so much attention to your internal existence. You know, Get back out here with me. We'll take care of it. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure we all are. And the first thing, always, 
is to relax the body. Always relax the body. Head to toe, inside and out. Now, you know you're not the body. You know you're not the body. So therefore, the body is it's like a sponge. It's an emotional vessel. It, it absorbs and attracts everything. Everything, everything. Stress, fear, anxiety. The mind and the ego conjure it up constantly. So th that's why it's so important to relax the body because the ego mind is constantly pumping in all this stuff garbage and all of these worries stresses fears anxieties and then as soon as you con as soon as you get rid of a few a bunch more flood in it's endless if you ever notice that it's endless and if you're when you're worry free this is what's interesting so you say to yourself i'm worry free there's not i don't there's really nothing something comes in out of the clear blow that you begin worrying about might be subtle at first but that's the ego mind. So in relaxing the body and getting to be automatic with relaxing the body, what happens is, is that that slowly disintegrates. And all of your fears, you know, anxieties, stresses, anger, sit them on the couch and, talk, and face each one. Okay, anger, I really don't have any need for you. Appreciate you visiting. Don't come back. Okay, fear, fear of whatever it may be. You know, nice to see you. You know, wouldn't want to be you. Uh, really don't care to have you around, and I really don't care to have you come back. And you really, this, this exercise that you do, it might seem a little strange at first, but eventually it'll be automatic. Whenever you have this stuff and the body gets stressed, tense, and, you know, uneasy, then you just end up turning around and letting go of everything. Letting go of it all. It'll all fade out, fall away. And you'll know it because the body becomes light, lighter. And you don't, you're not thinking, and you're not fearing. And the noise, the chatter that we all have, the ego mind, these tens of millions of thoughts that keep floating by us that aren't ours anyway, we still the mind of the ego. Relax the body. When you relax the body, you're focused on the breath, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Easy in, easy out. And when we do that, we're in the now. And we leave the mind and ego alone. We leave them alone. We watch them. We don't judge them, but we see how they operate. You know, as a matter of fact, you, could, you get to the point where you'll go, ah, that's ego. And you, you'll, you'll acknowledge it, that's ego. You'll have a thought, you'll have something, and you'll go, no, that's ego. Don't care to have it. Boom. And it disappears. doesn't mean the ego doesn't keep relentlessly trying to get that in there. But you, it's just automatic. You just shift into autopilot. And the body continues to stay in a relaxed state. It's no different than the hammock tied to two shade trees. We all know what a hammock is, and some of us have been in that position where we just fade out. You ever done that? You know, you've got a light breeze on your body. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're just perfect, and your eyes are closed, but you're not moving. And you have no, no intent of moving your body at all. You just are there. And all of the fears, worries, stresses, anxieties are gone. They're not there. And you're not doing anything. You're just being. And the being is so wonderful that you, you, you ever done that where you've been in that 
right? You, you can hear some noises and they're so far off, they're not disturbing, and you're just floating. And then in that moment, that is bliss. And you ever done it where you've done that and you go, boy, I'd like to get that feeling back. And you try and you try and you just can't, and interruptions and so on and so forth. But the way to do it is go back to the hammock, empty the mind, focus on the breath, and you'll be there again. Because it doesn't go anywhere. Because it's in you. It's you. And that's where we tap into the God that we are. So by focusing on the breath, we're always in the now. We're never not in the now. And the, the breath in through the nose and out through the mouth, an easy And we've got all, the, it's kind of like a real simple. There's no, you know, foul up or stuffiness or weight because it's all light. And we all have memories and we all reminisce. And the fun, fun to reminisce. We have this uh, subconscious mind library where we go up and we take a book off the shelf and we read, you know, we re review our experiences in this life and maybe other lives. And we say, you know, that was really a good time. I wish I could, you know, do that again. Oh, this wasn't a good time. Oh, this was a real bad time. But this is how we reference through this life as we continually move forward. But we, we don't stay there, you know. It's a private library. We go, we reminisce, and then we leave. Shut the door, turn the key, unlock, until next time. But then there's some of us that will go into that past, and that past is just dead. There's nothing there. It's dank, period. There's nothing. It's no air movement. It's, uh, it's cloudy, foggy, and everything's just dead. Old past. But some of us stay there so long that we end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past and reliving that past in that future. And a lot of people do it. They aren't consciously aware of it. They do at times ask themselves questions like, whatever we do, we end up here, no matter what we do. Others of us, picture three stones, paths, right? And the center path is the now. The path on the left is the past. The path on the right is the future. Most of us spend the majority of our time either in the past or the future. And for some reason we ignore the now, maybe because we think it's boring. But the now is the center path. And that path is the focus and to stay in the now and to still the ego mind so you can master the ego mind. Some of us will wander off in the future that doesn't exist because we're creating the, the future in the now. Everything happens in the now. So we will wander saying, why isn't this happening and how come this isn't happening? I'd like this to happen. And when am I going to have this? And when am I going to meet this person? And when am I going to get a raise? And when am I going to get a promotion? And when am I going to be able to relocate? And then we suffer, say, because then we, we, we get irritated, upset. And guess what? That, that tells the universe to give us more of that. Then we become more upset, more disappointed. This is because we gain attachments and expectations. I mean, you could you could intend something and visualize how you're going to experience it, okay? Visualize the experience of really having that through the heart, okay? And then you just kind of walk away because your trust is within you and the God that you are in the universe out there that's got your back 24-7. It always does, and it's always your best friend. Because just about any, it's like anything you ask for, you get. And unfortunately, most of us are constantly saying what we don't want, which we get.
your body is relaxed, you're in the now, you're focused on your breath, but how do you stay there? How do you stay there? Because we have tens of millions of these programmed thoughts that are constantly coming in. Clouds in the sky, it could be a super highway, they're constantly coming in. And guess what we do? Sometimes we grab onto them. And we can be focused on something in the now. Next thing you know, we're wandered off. Then we catch ourselves, then we're in the now, and the next thing you know, we wander off. This can happen several times. But the neat thing about it is, is that when you understand to be completely gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself, and be in 24-7 the deepest, deepest, deepest of eternal gratitude, then you say to yourself, okay, I'm wandering off. Not a big deal. I'll focus on my breath, and I'll be in the now. And believe it or not, that's how easy it is from that perspective to do that. That's why all that chatter and noise and all the stuff that, 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 that you know hassles us and we get irritable and stressed and in a hurry, um, that's why. But when we focus on the breath, all that goes away. Because you're only focused on the moment, moment to moment. You'd be amazed when you practice that enough. And that's where you're at the majority of the time. So when understanding you're not the body, so you look at the body and you see these wheels of light. Some people, some beliefs have them more, some beliefs have them less. We'll go with the, the regular seven. And they're all different colors and they start from your coccyx, coccyx which is your tip of your tailbone, all the way to the top of your head. What are those for? They're, they're etheric energy, spiritual. Okay, it's the love, the God source of pure consciousness. And they're kind of like conduits. And you, the God that you are, flows through them. That's what they're there for. And see, it's been mixed up for a long, long, long time on what they were for. But what they're for is, is that you, the God source, flows through that body and you use those energy vortexes to do so. Your energy is off the charts, your power. How do you think the body runs? It runs through you. And then you begin to understand that that's how you flow through all the arteries, the organs, the tissue, everything. In fact, once you begin to connect with the God that you are, and you, you, you really love and enjoy that interaction, you'll begin to understand everything there is to know about that body you're in. Every aspect, anything that needs to be tended to, period. So it's like the body is an energy film, it's perpetual. So you flow through those energy vortexes, those chakras, right? And you go up through the head and you fountain back down around through the coccyx and this is just a constant circular motion of energy. Where do you think the aura comes from? Why is the aura these different colors of light? Well, you've got seven vibrant colors in the chakras. You're an energy fountain. The God within that body is omnipotently powerful. So it, it's light. Lights up that whole body, and then you get these kind of like, almost like a vapor light around the body, which is the aura, which is the light of God you so when you you get to the understanding that you can master your body heal it whenever you want and that time will come but you won't master it by being outside, out there, entertaining false authority, false direction, false information, and being consumed by the materialism and, and, and possession of things. 
the physical world. Because it's when you stop wanting, everything comes to you. Now, we all know that the soul that powers this body is the heaven, the God, the pure consciousness, and the body is the earth. So we are literally heaven on earth. And those of us that are consciously aware to a certain extent, we know that every step we take, we're creating paradise. Not only that, we've learned to shine our light outward 360 degrees in a constant fan out, period. It's, it just constantly moves out. And it affects millions. That's why when I talk about the fact that you can have a lake that's as clear as a glass, there's no movement, there's no apparent movement of water. You take a stone and you drop it in there, and it, of course it pops up and it makes waves. But then eventually the waves disappear because your eyes can't see that those waves continue throughout that lake and affect that entire lake. So this is a planet, a god planet, over 8 billion gods, not all of them are awake, shining their light outward, consciously aware, to a certain degree, that they are the god. So if you were to go in outer space and look at this planet, you would see that it glowed. In fact, it's so bright that there's nothing in the universe can come close to it. We also know that we are pieces. You know, the God within each and every one of us is one. So parts of each other, not the body, but the God within. And we do know that parts of us are asleep. It doesn't, it's not hard to do that. You just, when you're in meditation and you're still, you can feel it through the heart-mind that parts of you are asleep. Now, they're with us, but they don't participate in this meditation or any of the meditations that we do because they're asleep. And you can't, you can throw a bucket of water on them, ice cold, ice, cold, ice water, and slap them several times, but they're still asleep. They're with us, but they're not engaged. So we call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And that includes everything. Now, they come in the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this entire universe with not even one sacred inch of sacred space to spare. They come in trillions of Googaplexes from trillions of universes in every direction. And this includes the archangels, the cherubim, and the seraphim, and the archetypes, the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Vedantia, Pell, Thoth, Yal, Yeshua, many, many, many more. All, all of the light energy beings on this planet that we're not, oh well, we're kind of aware of. Well, with these eyes, with these bodies, we only see about 1% of what is. So they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, and configurations of which we've never viewed. But the ones that we're somewhat familiar with are the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. All the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, and beneath earth. All of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. All the galactics, celestials, and off-worlders, 
are only familiar with just just scratching the surface of how many species and civilizations there are. And the ones that we're kind of familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the feline, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Abion. Many, many, many. They've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. The archangels, their civilization has vibrated at a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But we do meet with them, we interact with them. It doesn't, it doesn't really dawn on us while we're doing that. It's usually afterwards that something in our hearts go, that was, maybe not even out loud, you could be with somebody, but you might say, that was an angel, that, that wasn't just a regular interaction. Because you'll feel it, you'll feel the vibrational frequency in your heart. And they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands. And the reason is, is because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And they deliver the same message to us over and over and over again through every lifetime. The messages are delivered differently every time. And when you finally decipher what the message is, it is, isn't it magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? And that is bliss. You want them to surround you? Just ask. They will. You'll feel it. The ascended masters, they've mastered the physical, ascended into physical form, mastered it, and ascended out of physical form, mastered that. And they hold pure God form, pure consciousness. We have ascended into physical form and our, our mastering physical form creating our experience to perfect our creation. And we're all gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, Benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. And we're all God. And we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify. And it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This circle of light is so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brilliance. What is it? It is the God force love light energy within each and every single one of us. It is immeasurable in power, and it is pure, deep, eternal love. And we're flooding this planet 24-7, head to toe inside now. With the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. All of our brothers and sisters, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, we are flooding with the light that we are in these bodies. We begin to ascend above the planet and we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere. And we notice it's, it's like this, this e- eternal uh, ballroom globe that has all these mirrors on it reflecting all kinds of colored light. 
except this is shooting out beams of light and it is a trillion times more intense and it's literally passing through all of us gathered in this meditation and we zero in on the reflective points which we notice these little microscopic perfectly etched mirrors and we enter them and discover that all of us all of us gathered in this meditation consciously aware to a certain extent are teaching and learning from each other we're either a student or a teacher or both and we're all doing it doesn't matter if it's a thousand light years away we're all doing it and we always will that's a really good thing instead of judging someone they come into your life whether for a second a year a month a week a day an hour and you say I wonder what they're teaching me or what I'm teaching them or what I'm learning for them or what they're learning from me absolutely magnificent all being deeply grateful for that we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael this is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the power of healing we're then met by the purple violet blue light of Archangel Michael this is the column of light that we created that reminds us all of our omnipotent power strength and resolve then we're met with the white fire this is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that from head to toe inside and out 24 7 eternally so we are protected this white fire armor is way beyond anything that we think of armor on this planet no lower dark matter survival matter frequencies no demon possession no attachments no nothing they can't come close to us they know it they can't handle our vibrational frequency they'll vaporize so they stay away yet only you only you only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough whether consciously or unconsciously through hatred greed anger envy hurry fear worry dishonesty you will create a breach in your white fire armor enough so to allow lower dark matter survival matter frequencies to come flooding in then demon possession then attachment and a plethora of other things in the lower dark matter survival matter frequencies now if you do decide to do this you're immediately met with a double column of light the first one is the purple transmuting flame we created this column to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame we can transmute all of these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more and then right behind it the violet ray this is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray we can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest of the highest high the deepest of the deepest deepest and the purest of the purest purest eternal love gratitude and peace we are then met with the golden pink white light this is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are the Sun we are the sunlight we are the rain the rainbows we are the sunsets the sunrises we are the oceans the rivers the lakes the streams we are the trees and the forest the soils the mountains 
the animals, the clouds, the sky. We are everything, and everything is us. So the next time you see a sunset, or you view a sunrise, or a starlit night sky, or an ocean front, or a mountain view, or a rainbow, it is you. It is the God within you. Divine perfection. You're the beauty. You're the bliss. You're the majesty. You're the opulence. All of us are. We always have been. We always will be ever beyond and forever. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. Why? Because we can, if we're carrying physical form. We come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. It sets right smack dab in front of us. We created this tower. It's bigger than the solar system. In the center of it is this oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. And it is, it is literally surrounded by numerous rings, ribbons of light, multicolored. And it's all sending out this mist or haze. It looks like electricity and, and like a fog. And it absorbs and penetrates with this warm hug almost. It feels like a warm wave that flows through us. And the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes gratitude. Then comes peace. Then comes well-being. Then comes great abundance, great prosperity, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss. Joy, tranquility, benevolence, major prosperity, major abundance. It's endless. It's continual. It never stops. And then we discover it is a reflection of the gods within each and every one of us. At the top, we designed it so the Golden Ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees 24-7, as it's doing right now on all of us, saturating us all. It is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. All life, the highest supreme value the universe being flooded on and above and below this planet. Now, we're drops of this golden ocean. We hold this golden ocean's essence. The golden ocean is the drops. The drops are the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We come into full contact of our meditative sphere and set center circle. We created this sphere well over three and a half years ago. It houses almost 1,600 of our meditations in perpetual motion. Imagine that. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world. Every day, over three and a half years, seven days a week, with the highest of the highest highs of intense of shifting this entire planet's existence and the higher frequencies, higher realms of existence. And that frequency is love, gratitude, and peace. Love, gratitude, and peace. You can feel it everywhere. You can feel it 24-7. Through your heart, mind. 
It is easy. It, it really is easy for any of us to manifest our dream life. All you got to do, do it from the heart mind. Just tell yourself it is super easy and then relax profoundly into how you'd love your dream to how you would love your dream to look and feel. And just be sure to include all of the wonderful details. And some people would call that, or you might say, this is my day to dream up the impossible. And you know why that's stated that way? Because you're the only one that will stop your impossible from being reality. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Rely not upon your own will. Your will is not trustworthy. Guard yourselves against sensualism, for it surely leads to the path of evil. Your own will becomes trustworthy only when you have attained a hardship. Take this with you for the rest of the day, in the evening and night, and the following morning. And we will return here Sunday, September 12th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. Mm-hmm.